Hey guys, welcome back. Today on The Untidy Artist, I am excited to be doing a tutorial on skin tones for fairy dolls. This has been a very requested video. I was excited to put it together. I am going to show you some of the different ways that I figured this out and some of the techniques I used. Um, I did base all of this on the Fitzpatrick scale, which is a widely accepted skin typing method. It's based on the amount of pigment in the skin and the tolerance to the sun. And I thought it was a really good place to start for getting a broad variety of skin tones. I wanted to use brands that were easy to find. So you can either find these at Hobby Lobby, at Michael's Craft Store, at Joann's, on Amazon. And I also wanted to find a generally used type of embroidery floss. And so I'll be using DMC, which is my favorite. Now the skin types go all the way from one to six. And the first thing I did was print off the scale. I will put a link below in the description. I just found it by Googling the Fitzpatrick scale. I printed this off, took it to the craft store with me and matched up some thread to the different skin tones I wanted to do for this tutorial. Then I grabbed a variety of paint colors all the way from a coral to a burnt umber. Um, this gives you a nice range so that you can mix the colors to get them to match your thread exactly because unfortunately there aren't a lot of exact paint colors that match the threads. You'll need some wooden beads. These are my favorite, the links below. I have some uh, floral wire because we'll be making twisting our fairy doll and I have some bamboo skewers. We're going to use these to paint the heads for our dolls. I have a little paintbrush, just a craft paintbrush I didn't show here. I've got some paper cups. We'll be using these when we paint our heads for our dolls. I found these flowers on Amazon and I just thought they were so beautiful and I was really excited to use them in a tutorial. So I decided to dress each of my different fairy dolls in one of these flowers. I love that you can find these on Amazon. Um, they weren't expensive and I think they're really great quality for the price I paid. So these are about three and a half inch flowers that we'll be using and that link is below in the description of the video. So the first color I'll be using is Burnt Umber and I felt like this color covered type five and six of our fairy dolls skin tones. And so I'm going to grab my bamboo skewer. I'm going to put the bead on the skewer and then I'm just going to take a little bit of the paint and I actually flip my cup over and just put it in the top of the cup. Then I grab my paintbrush and it's pretty straightforward. I'm going to paint the bead. Now the burnt umber color in this brand, the folk art worked really well for type five and six. Um, and I am using the satin so you can see I'm just painting it. You wanna give it a nice even coat and then I'm gonna take another paper cup and place it over the paper cup and so it can dry. And once it's completely dry, then I'm going to give it another coat of paint. So I always give all of the heads at least two coats of paint, sometimes three, uh, depending on how thick I put the paint on. And so I'm just giving it another coat, remembering to get the top and the bottom and to evenly go over the bead and then I'm going to let that dry. So that was our type, mostly six and a little bit five in the skin tones. Then we're going to go more type four and five. This is Bark Brown, once again from Folk Art, and it is satin. And the thing that was nice about these first two beads that I'm painting is you don't have to do any mixing. The colors were pretty straightforward, and I was able to find some thread that I felt matched really well. So you can see I'm just giving it a nice even coat. I let it dry. I give it another coat, which I didn't show here, and that one is set to go. So the next type we're doing is between three and four. Now with this one, I am mixing three colors and I mixed a lot of colors to finally figure out what worked really well. So I'm using a warmer medium brown. This is kind of a cooler uh, caramel type color. And then this is a, it's called bright coral and it actually balanced everything out really nicely. So I'm just putting even parts of all three of these colors. Now, if you can't find this brand, I'm hoping that if you decide that you wanna do different variations in the skin tones that you can purchase the colors that I'm showing you here 
and it will give you the ability to mix them up differently to match the thread. So you can see I hold the thread up to the paint. If it needed a little bit more pink, I would have added a little bit more. If it needed to be darker, I would have put in more of the brown. But this gives you a nice base to start off of. All of the links for all of the colors I'm using for the thread and the paint will be below in the description. So I'm giving it a nice even coat. I let it dry and I give it another coat. Okay, the next one that we're doing is basically the type two. And with this one, I'm just using some of the coral and I'm mixing it with this light caramely brown called coffee latte. And these two colors together, I was able to get that uh, type two, type three skin tone. And once again, after you have it mixed, you can grab your thread and hold it up and see if you like the way the color turned out. Um, Sometimes the colors do end up looking different on the bead. The good news is if you get it on the bead and you don't like it and you wanna remix the color, you can always just paint over the bead again. So that was our skin type two and three. And then for our just type one skin type, you can use paint. I decided to just go with the color of the bead because it saved me a step, but I will put the color that you could use below in the description. Now it's time to assemble our fairy doll. So I'm going to grab this type six to assemble first. And you can see I've taken the floral wire, the bead, the embroidery floss, and I have twisted her into this cute little doll. And now I'm going to wrap her body with the thread. And this is 3371, which is a gorgeous black brown. And I also used that same color for her hair. So you can see I've just twisted her together. One thing I found worked really well is to just grab a Sharpie and go over that little piece of wire that's at the top of her hair to help cover that up so it doesn't show as much. Then I'm going to style my doll's hair. Now, if you're new to making fairy dolls, you'll wanna check out my basic fairy doll tutorial. In that, I teach you step-by-step -step how to take the wooden bead, the floral wire, and the embroidery floss and twist it into this beautiful little doll. So. This is just me going through really quickly. I'm giving her a basic hairstyle that we're gonna end up pulling into a little side ponytail when we dress her. You can obviously style your doll's hair however you'd like. I do have a lot of tutorials on my YouTube channel. Curly hair, uh, ponytail, different updos. Um, I actually just had a request for high piggy tails, which I thought was a fun um, hairstyle I haven't figured out yet, so let me know below if that's something that you'd like to see. And once her hair is all styled, we have our fairy doll. And I love how she came together. I think she's just so beautiful. So I followed that same step with all of my other fairies. So I've got five different fairies that cover the different skin tones that you can see on the Fitzpatrick scale going all the way from one to six. So here's what I'm hoping you'll take away from this tutorial. By printing off the scale, you can match embroidery floss colors to the skin tone you want to create. And then by using a range of paint colors that go from a corally pink to a dark black brown, you can get a very broad range of skin tones that fall within this range on the Fitzpatrick scale. I will have all of this information below in the description of the video, the exact colors I used for the embroidery floss and the paint. But remember, if you can't find these, this brand of embroidery floss or the folk art paint, this can still be done using that same method. And here we have our beautiful fairy dolls. I was really pleased with the broad range of skin tones I was able to achieve with this. And after a lot of research and a lot of trips to the craft store, I'm really happy with how these gorgeous, gorgeous fairies turned out. So the next step is to just dress your dolls. And I'm using the flowers I found on Amazon. I matched up some embroidery floss and gave my dolls a top and a pair of shorts. And then I'm going to take those flowers and I'm going to use them to create the skirts for our fairies. Then I decided to add a little bit of glitter to the top of each skirt and I tied the hair in a side ponytail and added a little flower. Remember, if you're new to making fairy dolls, you'll want to check out my basic fairy doll tutorial. I break each of these steps down and show you step-by-step step how to twist your doll, how to wrap your doll, how to do the clothing, how to put the skirt on, all of those things you'll find in that basic fairy doll tutorial. And that's it, we're all set. I hope you all found this tutorial helpful. If you have any comments or questions, 
please post those below. If you enjoyed this tutorial, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please do. I have a lot of fun fairies coming out and a lot of other fun craft ideas on my YouTube channel. A big shout out to all of the people that requested this tutorial. I am really excited about these beautiful dolls and I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and that it was helpful. If you haven't already followed me on Instagram, please do. You'll see new projects that I'm working on and a little bit of my everyday crazy life. As always, I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.